bless you all. This uh, morning, we've been dealing with a, a topic that is very vital in the body of Christ. Really very vital. I talked on this topic yesterday in our Bible study, and I, um, I want to let you know it will be a blessing to you. Great blessing. And that is uh, restoration of relationships and fellowships. It's a very sad thing in the body of Christ to see most Christians walking in strife. Not just few, most. And I believe that it's not the will of God. And I believe that it's the work of the enemy because the devil knows that where there is unity, there is blessing. I told people yesterday in the evening that the reason you, you don't see so much blessing in the house of God is because one particular thing that God is so much concerned about his house is missing. And that is unity. Amen? Unity. And we have the ability to create unity. We have the ability to reconcile broken relationships. But most of us are so stubborn and not willing to yield to the will and the commandment of God. But yet, we want to see the blessing. And it doesn't work like that because if you fail to keep what God says, God is not ready to break his own law because of you and me. That is why it is very vital that you listen to this message and put it to practice. Because I want us to take it practically. Practically. You see, a lot of times you see people, they say, I have forgiven someone that offended me, but yet they have not. I know I have taught on this topic before, but I want to show you practically on how you can bring restoration and reconciliation into broken relationships. I'm not just talking about only marriage relationships, but relationship in the body of Christ. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Hallelujah. I hope you're hearing me. Second Corinthians. If not, you can just give me, send a message to me if you're not hearing. Second Corinthians, but I think you're hearing because the, the speaker is on. Second Corinthians 5, verse 18. Let's read. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Which means that everyone that is born again has this ministry. If you read from the 17, let's talk about being born again. That after being born again, you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And my question to you this morning is, if we have been given the ministry of reconciliation, why are so many people? walking in strife. I am not saying you are not going to be offended. I, it is my, my principle or it is, it is my, I say it all the time to people that as far as you breathe and as far as you live in this world, you will surely be offended. But the question is what are you going to do when you are offended? I said, offense will surely come as long as you live on earth. But at the same time, God has given us a way to reconcile relationships that are broken because of offense. It is a shame to the name of Jesus for two Christians to be walking in strife. It's a shame. I, will, I want to show you that it's a shame because during the time Jesus was praying for his disciples and those that would come, there was one particular thing that he was so much concerned. In the midst of that battle, Jesus was concerned about the unity of his body. I mean genuine unity. Because when I mean genuine unity, I don't want unity of teeth or unity of the head, but unity of the heart. That's what God is talking about. And I want us to see that in the book of John 17, verse 20. John 17, verse 20. He was so much concerned that even the time he was preparing for his death, this was what was bothering him. Can we imagine that? That Jesus was not bothered about Satan. He was not bothered about any other thing at this critical hour. But he was bothered about the unity of his church when he leaves. Let's see. John 17 verse 27. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also 
We shall believe on me through the word, which means me and you that believe in the word, believe in Jesus through the word of the apostles, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. You see, Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Ghost, their example of the unity. And I believe the word of God says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, that we should imitate God. If God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit walk in unity, it therefore means that the body also should walk in unity, genuine unity. Amen? And Jesus was concerned. He said that they may be one in us as we are one. You see, if I am one in the word of God, if I understand what the word of God is and I'm one with Jesus, one with the Father, and one with the Holy Ghost, and Mr. A is the same thing, Mr. B is the same thing, when we come together, we will surely unite together. The reason many people are walking in offense and strife is because of the lack of the word of God. Why? Because if they have been in the word of God, if they have given their heart to the word of God, they could have known that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they hate strife. I am not saying problems will not come. Problems will come. But how do you handle reconciliation and restoration? That is all we are talking about today. Knowing that without unity, there is no blessing. Without unity, there is no blessing. It is the responsibility of every believer, it is the responsibility of every believer to make peace when there is trouble. Amen? When there is trouble, you have been given that ministry to make peace. Amen? Let's see that in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Matthew 5, verse 9. Peacemakers. Everybody loves peace, but not everybody makes peace. Amen? Everybody loves peace, but not everybody makes peace. Matthew 5, verse 9. And let's see what the world says in that place. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, verse 9. Jesus was speaking here. He said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Those who make peace. Those who put peace in action. Not those who love peace. I believe with all my heart that everybody loves peace. But how many people make peace? He didn't say blessed are the peace lovers. He said blessed are the peacemakers. The peacemakers are called the children of God. And you got to make peace when there is trouble. But we don't want to do that. I will try to close it in a deceptive way. That is why this topic is coming because many of us, we are struggling. We are not living successfully because we don't know how to make peace and reconcile issues when it comes to us. Amen. 